This is my last 2023 TV show to review before I make my best and worst of the year. And we are going out not with a bang, but a whimper. Let's talk about Netflix's Obliterated. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my TV review for the first and now only season of the Netflix series Obliterated. It was just announced a few weeks ago that this would not be returning for season two. Uh, so if you are interested in this, you can check out uh, season one and the eight episodes that are up now on Netflix. Uh, but before we launch into the specifics of the show, let me welcome you into Dan Reviews It. Thank you for finding this video. We do movie and TV reviews here on the channel, and just about every day something new goes up, so there's always a bunch of stuff to check out. And uh, in fact, since uh, this is my final uh, TV series that I'm going to review for 2023, uh, you know, now that we're almost in April here of 2024, uh, I have a 2023 TV show playlist up on the homepage, so you can uh, look through all of the TV shows that I have reviewed in 2023, uh, and we're going to lead that into, of course, my uh, best and worst of the year. But like I said, uh, this show leaves us on a bit of a whimper note, not a bang. This is a not great show, um, and, and we'll talk about the reasons why here. Uh, but first, let me give you the, the basic premise of this show. Um, so essentially, this is about uh, a group of elite special ops uh, people from all over the U.S., really, a, a bunch of different uh, armed force branches, and they are coming together in Vegas to uh, defuse a bomb and you know stop this deadly terrorist attack. So they're like, yay, we did it. Let's party. Let's uh, get on the town, etc. So they get completely blotto, obliterated, as it were, um, and then they find out that the bomb that they thought they defused actually was a fake, and so now they have to come together to neutralize the real bomb while they are intoxicated, hungover, etc. Um, and so, uh, number one issue, I guess, well, uh, there's a lot of issues, but number one, let's say, um, you know, I, I often comment uh, on this channel about how these eight or ten episode, you know, seasons of a TV show really um, could have probably been better served as a film. This is like exhibit A for that. I can't believe that they stretched this premise over eight episodes. But here's partially how they did it. So number in episode one, at least half of the runtime is them partying, having sex, dancing, you know, doing drugs, whatever it is. Um, that could have been shown in about 90 seconds, two minutes. You know, we get it. They're, they're partying and, and now they're going to be drunk. Um, you know, so the whole premise really of the show doesn't, we don't find out until the end of the first episode, which that's pretty common these days. Um, you know, they give you like 45 minutes of setup and in the last five minutes they reveal, okay, this is kind of the premise of the show. And, um, it was a long time ago that I sort of decided, all right, well, upon reviewing a show, I, I have to at least say what the show is about. And if the premise doesn't reveal itself into the last couple of minutes of episode one, I, I can't help that. I will tell you that it takes us a whole episode to get to that premise, but um, that's the premise of the show. So the fact that, that it took these guys 50 minutes to reveal it, I can't help that. But that's just an example of why this really would have been served better as a TV show. Because I don't actually mind the premise. The premise is, is kind of fun. Um, although the show never really leans into the humor of the, the premise. Um, you know, I, I, since they're in Vegas, it's, it's a little bit maybe like the hangover, um, but not in that humorous direction. Like it tries to be funny, I guess, but in more of a, like, I don't know, CBS, uh, you know, nighttime, well, like a CSI, like, yeah, there's like some puns or whatever, but I, I wouldn't call, that a humorous show, and I wouldn't call this a humorous show either, um, but it's filled with sex, it's filled with action, um, if this were a, you know, like a Cinemax early 90s kind of movie, um, I think this would be probably running around the clock, it, it's got that sort of, um, it's definitely more, I mean, they used to run like softcore porn stuff on there, but like, yeah, there's a lot of nudity in this, sure, um, a lot of partying, but it, it just, it seems kind of bizarre to stretch this very thin premise into eight episodes. Um, and 
also with that, uh, the acting isn't that great. I, I don't really know any of these people. Um, the cast includes uh, Shelley Hennig. Let's see what her... Uh, well, she has a daytime Emmy... Two daytime Emmy Award nominations. Okay, so she might have come from a soap opera, so that actually makes sense. Uh, Nick Zeno. What do I know him from? Nothing. Oh, okay. Actually, I might know him. He was on uh, the WB show, What I Like About You, with Amanda Bynes. That was like 20 years ago. Um, okay, and C. Thomas Howell is the only person that I know, um, although I don't really even recognize him these days, since most of the stuff I know him from is from the 80s. But look, this is um, created by, among others, John Hurwitz, who is a big part of Cobra Kai. So obviously, Netflix, you know, trusts him. Oh, okay, cool. You know, this guy brought us Cobra Kai, um, and it's been doing great for, for us, and let's let's let him try this new show. Um, so I can see why they, they kind of gave this guy, um, you know, the, the rope to, to make his own show. But I just, I really, with all the sort of fly-by-night garbage Netflix movies uh, that only waste two hours of people's time, I, I am not sure why they thought this would be best served as an eight hour series. It's super slow, uh, and it all takes place pretty much over like a day and a half. You know, day one with the bomb, you know, night one with the drinking and, and partying, and then day two basically is them, you know, attempting to defuse the bomb. So it really, it takes place over a very small amount of time, too. So it just, it goes by slowly. None of the characters also particularly stand out, um, you know, because they're all having sex, and they're all partying, and they're all, you know, not one of them really stood out to me as like, okay, here's a well-defined character. So yeah, for me, this was uh, definitely a huge miss. Uh, I, I regret that it is my final 2023 show to review uh, because it is definitely a dud. I will leave obliterated with a D, and you may hear about this one again, probably, uh, as part of my worst of 2023 list. I still have to compile that, and we'll, we'll see what else is up in that category. But uh, yeah, I, I can see why this did not get renewed for season two. But look, if you're curious, it is on Netflix. You can stream uh, those eight episodes of season one right now if you would like. All right, thanks for watching Dan Reviews. We'll see you next time. Bye.